Hello everyone, I'm back tuning into today's first video, doing the ECMDF 30 day look at for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. So we're going to be looking at temperature and uh, rainfall precipitation anomalies uh, for the next four weeks. It will take us into the second half of August and uh, yeah, I'll get on that for you uh, very shortly. Just to say that the uh, second video update coming up later on today will be a regular 10 to 14 day -er, and uh, some very hot weather could be on the way just for a day or so around Friday. Um, so, uh, we'll bring you up to date on all of the latest developments with that in today's uh, second video update. Uh, we're going to go four weeks out with this. So, it's a month head, 30 day look head. We can go to weeks five and six uh, with the um, with the temperature rainfall anomalies from Copernicus. And uh, we'll do that in our live stream tomorrow from six o'clock. We will go uh, and have a look at weeks five and six temperature rainfall anomalies. Uh, in the live stream. That'll take us into early September, but for this video, we're going to stop at, uh, at week four. Uh, okay, then, so we're going to start off with the week one temperature anomaly. This one, Copernicus.eu, so a big thank you to them for uh, supplying uh, the charts, of course. We're going to start off with week one temperature anomaly, taking us, <coughs> excuse me, taking us from the 20, uh, uh, 27th of July through to the 2nd of August. So you can see the heat is really building uh, across many western parts of uh, Europe. We've got very substantially above average temperatures here. Much of Germany, the low countries, France, down into Mediterranean, through to Spain, Portugal, and on into North Africa. The uh, anomaly is going to 5 to 6 degrees above average across some southern parts of France and also across northern Spain as well. That is getting to the UK, but only very temporarily. It, it, we, the far southeast corner for the weekly anomaly goes above average. Other northwestern parts of the country and Ireland actually have below average temperatures for that anomaly uh, in the weekend, despite the fact that Thursday and Friday we'll see quite a warm up uh, across the board. In fact, much of Northern Europe has a cooler than average uh, week coming up. So many parts of Scandinavia has below average temperatures and that uh, extends into uh, eastern and northeastern parts of Europe and also into uh, Western Russia as well. Some parts of uh, West Russia around the Baltic Sea, for example, go to around five to six degrees below average. So in the north and in the northeast, it's uh, pretty cool. In the west and southwest, it's much hotter. Coming down through the Mediterranean, most places look pretty hot as well. Through the Med, uh, so yes, from like um, Spain and Portugal in the west, through the uh, central bowl of the Mediterranean, around the Balearic Islands and uh, and Corsica, Sardinia, Malta, all of those areas with the central part of the Med looking substantially hotter than average. Italy also looks pretty hot over the Adriatic, into the Balkans, very warm there. I mean, going down into Greece and Turkey, it's not quite as hot through there as it is across western parts of the Mediterranean, but nevertheless still generally quite warm, although the Black Sea uh, does look uh, a little bit cooler. So the Med generally hot, much of Western Europe generally hot, northern, eastern, e northeastern parts of Europe to Western Russia looking a lot cooler. This is the week one uh, precipitation anomaly. So increasingly, a jet stream has pushed northwards or is pushing northwards this week um, compared to where it's been through much of this uh, July. So it is still a wet and average week, much of Scandinavia, for example, around the Baltic Sea in towards western parts of uh, Russia. Yes, it's uh, wetter than average there. Uh, northern part of Scotland, also wet to an average, and much of Ireland too. So that's obviously where the jet stream is uh, running through, just here, with these areas of low pressure. But conversely, we've got higher pressure here across many parts of England and Wales, in particular, we're going down into France and over into the Low Countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, uh, and then through Germany, over to the eastern side of Europe. We've obviously got a ridge of high pressure through here, with low pressure and the jet stream going up through here. And, of course, this is what's drawing up these hot winds uh, from the south across western, southwestern parts of Europe. The Mediterranean looking generally quite dry as well, particularly from Italy over towards Greece and Turkey. Maybe uh, near a normal precipitation, which will be very dry, of course, at this time of year, um, for more central and uh, western parts of the Med. Just a hint of northern blocking as well up here across the very far north of Scandinavia where it does become drier than average again. 
Right, moving through to a week two temperature and not this is how things are looking. So generally still quite cool across much of northwest Europe. This is taking us from the third to the ninth of August. So it's a little bit hotter than average. It's quite significantly hotter than average in the very far north of Scandinavia and uh, Norway. But otherwise, most parts of, uh, of Scandinavia are looking cooler than average. And also in all parts of Germany, cooler than average as well. West parts of Russia, cooler than average. Ireland of the UK having below average temperatures as well. Around half a degree to perhaps up to one degree below average through there. Not as hot across France, Germany. Uh, low countries, so there the temperature anomaly is returning closer to average, so the heat is beginning to recede away uh, through this week two period. It is still hotter than average through southern parts of France, and then particularly going down to Spain and Portugal, uh, still quite significantly hotter than average through there, uh, with temperatures two to three degrees above average. Most parts of the Mediterranean as well are also looking quite significantly uh, warmer than average. Going over onto the eastern side of Europe, it's cooler than average in the northeast. Around the northern shores of Black Sea, it's warmer than average. And then down into Mediterranean, overall warmer than average through much of Greece and Turkey. I think it is quite a hot scene, actually, again, through week two, across many parts of, uh, many parts of the Med. Rainfall anomalies for week two look like this, not quite as unsettled really for the northwest. So it is still a little bit wet and average through southern parts of Norway, Sweden, and down into Denmark, for example. Uh, some parts of England, Wales, and Ireland again, a little bit wetter than average, but not, I don't think, as wet as it has been at times through this uh, summer. The wettest weather looks like it's actually on the eastern side of Europe. So kind of right from um, Ukraine and going down in towards the Balkans, those sort of areas, and possibly over to places like Hungary. Uh, does look quite significantly wetter than average through there. Uh, around the normal shores of Black Sea, again, it's drier than average. A little bit drier than average still across some France and uh, northern Spain. Overall, Mediterranean has average sort of precipitation. It's not as dry, actually, through the Med in this week. So maybe just hinting a little bit of instability breaking out through the Med uh, during this period, uh, possibly bringing a few uh, thunderstorms. But further north, I don't think northern Europe is quite as wet as it has been. Uh, week 3, temperature anomaly, taking us from the 10th to the 16th of August. Also, I've got another push of heat across the west of Europe. So, uh, again, temperatures significantly above average through Spain and Portugal, but this time rising above average again through much of France, just about getting into southeastern parts of uh, England as well. Um, so, yeah, and also over towards Germany, looking pretty uh, warm through there. So, I think definitely another push of very warm temperatures from the south. Uh, here from the temporary to the 16th of August. A little bit on the cool side still across some parts of Scandinavia, but the cool and average temperatures are fading away. Uh, it looks like things are warming across many parts of Europe as this August progresses. The eastern part of Europe, again, from Ukraine down towards the Balkans, probably a little bit on the cooler side there, although going further east into the southwestern parts of Russia around Black Sea is warmer than average. Mediterranean generally looking quite warm, especially so in the west, so from Italy through to Spain and Portugal does look pretty uh, warm or too hot uh, through there. Southeastern parts of the Med, probably near normal temperatures uh, through there. Precipitation uh, anomalies are looking pretty dry, so this is a more anticyclonic week across many northern western parts of Europe. Still wetter than average for northern parts of Scandinavia, also possibly uh, western Russia, but generally really from around sort of Poland uh, uh, westwards, it looks pretty dry. So much of Germany, for example, significantly dry on average. Many parts of France dry on average. Uh, southern Scandinavia, so like Denmark, southern Sweden, uh, southern Norway, significantly dry on average there. And yes, for the UK and Ireland, we are also significantly drier than average this week. So this is another high pressure dominated week. High pressure much more involved, I think, with this August on today's ECM. 30-day uh, look ahead uh, than it has been through, for some time, certainly through much of July. We, we've seen high pressure signals here for many western parts of Europe sending again the jet stream northwards. And that is, of course, allowing the warmth to push up from the south once again through this week, temporary to the 16th of August. Mediterranean, uh, near normal precipitation through there. Should still be pretty dry, really, for most parts of the Med in the middle of August if rainfall anomaly is near normal. And then we go through to week four, 
which is the 17th to 23rd of August, and temperatures start to drop back again uh, across the northwest of Europe. So Ireland, UK, Denmark, southern Sweden, southern Norway, temperatures going uh, a little bit cooler than average again. Uh, France still uh, warmer than average, as is Spain and Portugal. The low countries have returned back close to average. Germany, you see the temperature dropping back towards average uh, as well. Over on the east side of Europe, it's a little bit cooler there, uh, but um, in the southeast corner, it's pretty warm. And then looking through the Mediterranean, uh, again, warmest anomalies are light through central and west areas, from Italy back to Spain and Portugal, more than average. It is still a little bit on the warm and average side in the southeast of Medford, Greece and Turkey, but it isn't quite as hot uh, as it is further uh, westwards. And then finally, precipitation uh, from the 17th to 23rd of August. So it still looks pretty dry really across many western parts of Europe. Maybe not quite as dry as it uh, as it as it is in week in week three. Nevertheless, much of uh, much of northern France, for example, um, much of northern Spain, I should say, France, uh, the Low Countries, Western Germany, generally dry of an average through there. Many parts of the UK looking quite dry uh, as well. Not completely so, but but not too bad, uh, really. Not as wet as it has been through July. Scandinavia does look a little bit wetter, uh, generally. Um, so a little bit wetter through there. And then on the eastern side of Europe, it kind of varies uh, through area to area, really. But uh, but I think definitely there's a more anticyclonic flavour to the weather here for uh, for Western Europe uh, this August, rather than the very unsettled weather that we have had through um through July. Notice that uh, Iceland is significantly drier than average here, possibly telling us that the ridge, so so that's how things look uh, from the temperature of the 16th with rainfall anomalies. The ridge is probably centred somewhere around there. Uh, but, uh, but by the time we get through to week four, we're possibly centering the ridge a little bit further north, taking the ridge further north. And that's possibly why the temperature cools down uh, a little bit across the northwest parts of Europe. Something like that could be going on. Uh, anyway, but but yeah, I think overall we're probably looking at a rather drier uh, and a rather more anticyclonic flavour for western parts of Europe than for August, where we've had through this very unsettled uh, July. There will be variation. It's not going to be it's not going to be a classic summer month. I don't think there's going to be variation. We will get unsettled weather at times, but just not quite as cool and not quite as uh, as wet as we have had it across many northern parts of Europe during this very cool and unsettled uh, July. So, so August should see a little bit of summer coming along uh, at times. Uh, right, so uh, we'll extend out beyond this to weeks five and six in our live stream tomorrow from six o'clock in the uh, evening. Uh, but for this week's ECMDF 38 look okay, that's all for now and thanks for watching.